That milestone moment in the private space race about 90 minutes from now, four people, four new astronauts with no space experience from four different countries are scheduled to take off on a mission paid entirely by a crypto billionaire. But this is not just some expensive joy ride. Once in orbit, Fram 2 will circle over both of the Earth's poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. Uh, it's the first time a crewed mission has done this. It's crazy. We've been in space for quite some time. No one's ever done this trajectory over the Earth. Uh, but Priya Shrether is at Kennedy Space Center right now. Uh, clock is ticking. Uh, Priya, thank you so much for joining us. This is basically like four space rookies here. Uh, one of them has billions. Uh, but like, tell us how this all came to be here. Yeah, so it's really interesting, Gotti. Uh, this is all being funded by that crypto billionaire from Malta named Chung Wang, and he actually funded the three other people who are going to be on board this mission. They are all international adrenaline junkies turned amateur astronauts. We have a Norwegian director, a filmmaker who specializes in movies filmed in hazardous environments, a robotics researcher from Germany with a passion for ocean robotics, and an Australian professional polar adventurer. So all of them bring special expertise and credentials to this mission. As you mentioned, the first time a crewed mission is going to observe both the Earth's north and south poles from outer space. And they're going to be documenting some of the cool phenomenon that you can potentially see from there, including a polar light show called Steve, which is similar in characteristics to the northern lights. So part of the reason this has never been done before, Gotti, is because the trajectory for this space shuttle to get there passes through a lot of radiation, which if ex if humans are exposed to it could potentially be dangerous. But this is going to be a three to five day mission. They're going to be conducting about 22 different scientific research experiments. And many of them have to do with human resiliency and adaptability in outer space. So how does the body deal with potentially motion sickness in outer space? What do the sleep circadian rhythms look like? And they're even going to be testing women's hormone levels with urine strips in outer space. And one of the cool things they're going to be doing, at least I thought so, is they're going to attempt to grow mushrooms in outer, outer space. And the reason that's mm. so important, as you know, Gotti, is that we're eventually trying to potentially have a civilization up in outer space. So, of course, humans are going to need a way to nourish themselves, to sustain themselves. So as you mentioned, hopefully the spaceship is scheduled to launch at around 945 Eastern time. We are experiencing a little bit of lightning and bad weather here. So there is a chance that it could be delayed a little bit, but as of right now, the scheduled launch time is 9.45. Fingers crossed. And, and, you know, asking for a friend here, what is the going rate these days for a SpaceX Falcon 9 trip to a <laughs> lower Earth orbit? Well, great question, Gotti. I'm glad you asked. And, you know, this particular price tag for this mission has not been disclosed to the public, but we do know that a SpaceX Falcon 9 mission back in 2022 cost about 67 million dollars. So even though we're trying to make human space exploration more frequent and more accessible, and that's exactly why they're trying to do these launches more frequently, uh, it still comes with a pretty hefty price tag. So it's probably not going to be accessible for anyone like me or you anytime soon. <laughs> Priya Shrether, thank you so very much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.